Welcome back to Hannity. The trial has begun in what is being called the American Sniper murder case. Now, ex-Marine Eddie Ray Routh is being charged with murdering Chris Kyle and his friend Chad Littlefield at a Texas gun range back in February 2013. Now, Routh's defense team claims he was suffering from PTSD. And today, Chris Kyle's widow, Taya, took the stand. Now, the judge did not permit audio of her testimony, but she was visibly seen breaking down in tears several times as pictures of Chris and his family were reportedly shown to the courtroom. Earlier, I sat down with former Navy SEAL Kevin Lace, who served alongside Chris Kyle in combat, and he helped Bradley Cooper prepare for his role in American Sniper. I spoke with him about this and much more. All right, so you go from Navy SEAL to movie star. Not a bad jump, right? It's quite a transition. <laughs> um, well, Tell us about Chris. I mean, I, I, I got to interview his brother, his wife, and, and his dad, and I love them. Um, you knew him at the time he was doing all of this. What was he like? Uh, you know, Chris was one of the most humble people I've actually met um, and worked with. And I had a unique position being a junior member in the platoon. So he was that sniper, that mentor for a lot of us new guys and people that hadn't deployed at that level. So I got to learn a lot from him and study him to, you know, assume that position, try and be up there at that level. So I got to watch Chris, and I got to watch Chris take a lot of credit and pass it off to the people around him. And I think that showed his humility. Chris was the humble guy, and it, you know, you see it in his personal life and the amount of charity he did. And sure. he, he wanted to go ahead and That really helped him, though, because you know, you go 190,000 miles an hour, and then all of a sudden, it stops. Right. That's hard. That yeah. transition's hard. He had to find something that would bridge that gap, and he found solace, and he found peace in working with veterans, and he yeah. found a lot of peace and giving back. And I think that was the big thing about Chris. What really has frustrated me, I've actually, I really love the fact that the American people, you know what, the rank and file, the great Americans that make this country, that work hard, pay their taxes, play by the rules, make this country great every day, they responded, making this a blockbuster hit. Then you get the Michael Moores, and, and I'll give you another example. This is the NBC foreign correspondent. Now you have generals and, and colonels demanding an apology from NBC for this. It is a very compelling, very thought-provoking, very emotional movie. But when you juxtapose it with the real Chris Kyle and the right. story and what has emerged about what kind of personality he was, in his own words, very far you're from talking reality. about the stories when he was back home in Texas, which may not have been true. Is that what you're talking a about? A lot of stories about when he was back home in Texas, a lot of his own personal opinions about what he was doing in Iraq, how he viewed Iraqis, some of what people have described as his racist tendencies towards Iraqis and Muslims as he was going on some of these, um, you know, killing sprees in, in Iraq on assignment. That's NBC's foreign correspondent that is just basically giving you hearsay as though it's gospel truth. Mm. Was that Chris Kyle? No, and I think what you really have to look at is sometimes you have to get rid of the small memories to make room for the big ones. And the biggest memory of this story is going to be the validation we get from veterans. When they say, this story resonates, it ruminates with my life. And people see this story and they can feel it. And it's the story of us. And really, as a veteran, you know what really hurts you. It's the IEDs. It's the bullets. Constructive criticism or criticism that's from the movie That's just made-up criticism. It, it, that wasn't Chris. You knew him. You were friends with him. You served with him. Was that him? No. What, and, they, and, what he described, the, the so-called news guy right. on NBC. Is that what? Is that the Chris that you no. knew? Chris was, you know, he was a humble guy. He definitely re represented the teams well. And like all special forces, Rangers, SEALs, we're professional soldiers, and we carry that. And more confirmed kills than any sniper in U.S. history. And how many countless lives did he save in the process of using Using his skill. Right, and that's what he talks about. What haunts him is the people he couldn't save. And I mean, that's a man of character. So and that integrity. was a real part of the movie? Yes. Tell me, how did you get to get be in the movie? I mean, and, you know, I know you're a big star now, and I appreciate you coming. I'm kidding. Of that's course. easy. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. But um, <clears throat> how did you get in the movie? That's pretty interesting. My wife actually sent a message to Jason Hall, the writer, when she had found out that he was writing the screenplay. And, you know, that progressed, and I started working with Chris and Jason to help, you know, work on the technical components. And when Chris was murdered on February 2nd, helped invite Jason down to Texas so he could meet the SEALs, right. meet the family. And it progressed to a, you know, a technical advisor. And it wasn't until I was on the range with February, in February 20. 14 with Bradley and we're training and he's like have you ever thought about playing yourself in the movie and it caught me off guard because I was hyper vigilant and very protective of Chris and wanted to get that story right that I didn't know what to say I was like just hit these targets and we'll figure it out later and he right. you know kind of got got me into that whole uh, did he capture the essence of Chris Absolutely. You know, Chris has that larger than life, that Texas, you know, uh, personality. And I think Bradley shows that in the movie. And it's really through an in-depth character study that he was able to do that. Wow. 
Uh, I admire all you guys. I, I don't know how you got through Hell Week. I ever taught every Navy SEAL I've ever met, I ask, how did you do it? Because it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually even, it's the hardest thing you ever do, right? Right. It's, it's one of those things. It's the most fun you never want to have again. <laughs> and, you know, some of my best friends are guys I went through Hell Week with. And, yeah. and really, you, you form a brotherhood in the sands of, of Southern California, and it stays with you to the day. And the brotherhood shows How many hours do you sleep in a night? Uh, I think it's five and a half in a week. Whew. I don't know the math. In that Are you one. even thinking straight at that point? You don't with all think the physical? At that point. You just you act, do. Right. No. All right. Well, it's not an honor to meet you. Thank Very you so nice much for coming. You, Appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks so much. All right. Coming up, we need your help, and that's tonight's question of the day, which is straight ahead.